Madam President, I appeal the ruling of the Chair. The proposed amendment is germane to the bill at hand because the bill at hand deals with preventing certain motor vehicles from being ridden in New York City and beyond that, uh, even being sold in New York City. And of course, the amendment, uh, Madam President, deals with uh, the repeal of congestion pricing, which is another law policy here uh, in the state of New York, specifically in the city of New York, which charges a tax or a fee uh, to vehicles that enter a certain area of New York City, specifically the so-called uh, business district, that portion of Manhattan south of 60th Street. Uh, what is congestion pricing, Madam President, and why is it germane to this legislation? Congestion pricing uh, says that if you are a resident of New York City or resident of anywhere, uh, and you decide, especially if you're in New York City, a Staten Islander, a Brooklynite, someone from Queens, from the Bronx, even from the northern portion of Manhattan, if you have the goal to decide to get in your vehicle and drive uh, within your own city, for whatever reason, to live your life, uh, you are going to be charged a tax. If you're in a car, you're going to be charged $15. If you're a local business uh, in a small truck, it goes up to $25, $26. If it's a larger truck, it'll be $35. Madam President, I can't think of a worse policy uh, especially at this time when people are really suffering in the state of New York, trying to make ends meet, trying to put food on the table. Just about everything that people need to do in the state of New York, the city of New York, is more expensive than it was even a couple of years ago. And now, Madam President, with congestion pricing about to come into effect, uh, there'll be one more or many more things uh, that will cost more in, in the city of New York. I've talked to uh, businesses on Staten Island. I've met with the Staten Island Chamber of Commerce, and what they tell me is this is going to be a death uh, blow to many local businesses uh, who will then have to pass the costs on uh, to New Yorkers, whether in New York City or outside of New York. And yet again, Madam President, thanks to congestion pricing, things are just going to cost more. Um, how much of a tax is this going to be, congestion pricing, Madam President, you might ask? Well, according to the MTA, it's a $1 billion tax. That's their estimate. A billion dollar tax that's going to be uh, shouldered by and uh, the people of New York are going to be burdened by, uh, which is curious. I think that's the word of the, the moment. It's curious because if the goal now, the goals keep changing, Madam President, if you listen to the MTA and those who support it, uh, Governor Hochul, for instance, uh, if the goal is to reduce congestion, well, how are you going to get a billion dollars out of this? Well, that must mean, according to my math, that still millions of vehicles are going to drive into the business district. You can't have in any other way, you're either going to have make a billion dollars or the cars aren't going to drive there. So it's not doing much there. But then, according to the MTA, um, whichever vehicles or how many vehicles you uh, prevent from coming into the business district, you know, that very elite section of New York City who can't be bothered with the rest of those of us who don't live there, uh, from the outer boroughs especially, um, there's going to be, according to the MTA, more traffic and congestion in Staten Island and in Brooklyn and in the Bronx and in Queens. The MTA tells us that. So really, at the end of the day, what is congestion price, in Madam, Madam President? It's a bailout of the mismanaged MTA, which has failed this city and this state miserably and continues to fail it more and more as the months and years go by. We see crime that they only recently told us was only a perception of crime. Stop fear-mongering, Senator Lanza. The subways are fine. And we just see that the statistics have come out. And violent assaults, those are assaults where someone is seriously injured are up more than 
hundreds of New Yorkers are being violently assaulted on our subways. They're filthier than ever. There are more breakdowns than ever. <laughs> thought, thought it might be my colleague, Senator Gennaris, but it, it's not. Zoe, Zoe. So the MTA is failing at every turn. Uh, they don't provide, they don't live up to their mission of providing safe, efficient transportation for the people of the city of New York and the rest of the state. And so they need a bailout, Madam President, and that's what this is. And they're so desperate, they're so desperate, that just recently, because they are afraid, they're, they listen to what happens here on the floor, evidently. They listen to comments that are made by members of the Senate and the Assembly, and they see that support might be softening for congestion pricing. I hope that's the case. We're where we always were here on the Republican side. We oppose it. We voted against it. So they just started, my, my colleague from Staten Island can attest, to running digital ads on buses. There is a digital ad that the MTA is paying for that is running on Staten Island buses right now. Y you have to hear this to believe it. They are asking Staten Islanders to support congestion pricing because, get this, according to them and their inference, congestion pricing is going to kill Staten Islanders. You heard me. I'm not misspeaking. That's what the ad in essence says. I don't know who came up with this over there in the MTA. Maybe the Bud Light marketing department is hiring. They're saying that, and this is the elitist, arrogant, really disgusting leadership we have at the MTA. They're saying in this ad that congestion pricing now is about something else. It's this wonderful idea that's going to reduce traffic in this one area of Manhattan, and as a result, ambulances are not going to be blocked in traffic. And so lives are going to be saved. And yet they say, the MTA, traffic will increase in Staten Island, Queens, the Bronx, and Brooklyn, which means that more ambulances are going to be stuck in traffic in the outer boroughs. That's what it's come to. Why do we have congestion pricing, you might ask, Madam President. It's not because of something that someone may or may not have said 14 years ago, taken out of context. We have it because, <laughs> on Solo, I'll get to you. We have it, Madam President, because the Assembly Democrat majority voted it in place. We have it, congestion pricing, Madam President, because the Senate Democrat conference voted it in place. I have a list of all the members of the Democrat Senate who voted for it and now seem to be opposing it. Some have even made comments on this floor as recently as last week, expressing their opposition. I have that list. One of my Senate colleagues recently said that congestion pricing is a slap in the face of his constituents. And he voted for it. I, have, I agree with my colleague. It is a slap in the face of his constituents and every New Yorker. Now, I'm not going to necessarily personalize this issue and read the names on this list. I have a better idea, Madam President. I have a feeling in a few moments you are going to remind the House that the vote before us is on the rules and procedures of this House. 
I want to remind my colleagues that there is another rule in procedure, and it's very simple. It says that if the majority of the members in this House at this time vote in favor of this amendment coming to the floor, we'll have a vote on it. And if a majority of the members in this House at this moment vote in favor of that amendment, the Senate will have voted to repeal congestion pricing. The amendment is very simple. It's about the simplest, straightforward amendment I've ever seen in my years here. It simply says, repeal congestion pricing. We can do it. Senator Generis reminds me all the time about the supermajority. You don't need the governor. She seems to be the last elected official in New York State anyway who seems to support congestion pricing. You don't need her. This House votes. I promise you every Republican vote. From the sound of what I hear from districts across the aisle and from some of my colleagues across the aisle, it sounds like there are a majority on your side of the aisle as well. You pass it here. Assembly Democrats seem not to support congestion pricing. You get it passed over there. You override the veto. And guess what? Relief for New York. Something people back home really want. And we can do it. We can do it, Madam President. All we need to do is together rule this amendment germane, and we will begin the process of repealing congestion pricing. So to my colleagues, don't just tell your constituents you don't like congestion pricing. Don't just tell and look into every camera that comes your way that you think it's a slap in the face. Stop telling the voters you're against it if you don't mean it. And if you mean it, vote. Join me and my colleagues, and let's vote together, bipartisan. Let's vote this amendment germane. Let's get it on the floor, and let's have a vote on the repeal of congestion pricing. For these reasons, Madam President, I strongly urge you to consider your ruling.